What is up everyone, Avial Issa here with Yappa238.com and welcome to the Yappasolic Podcast. It's the podcast where we talk about being young, being apostolic, taking that power and putting it into action. What is up my friends? I hope your guys' day is going fantastic, your week is going splendorous and you guys I'm super excited because we are kind of at the close of the camp convention conference season. Maybe some of you guys have a few more uh, weeks of it but we are kind of closing the summer for apostolic young people and the wise leaders of majority of our organizations, they have have like thought like dude the summer is when we need to give these young people some ammunition as to living for God and also connect them in fellowship and give them some things to take back so they can dominate the school year and so a lot of us have had camps and conventions and stuff and I know probably uh, some of you guys a large uh, part a uh, portion of Yappa 238 or, or the Yappa fam, or at NAYC 2019. And I'm super thankful for all the conferences that happened over the past 30 to 45 days and the, the camps and everything like that because it's like, it's, 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 uh, how would you say, it's the wisdom of the ages being invested into apostolic young people, the, the fire, the, the hands, the action, the energy of right now, today. And so, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for every single conference that you guys have had the opportunity to attend and have been involved with because they're so beneficial to us as young apostolics, super powerful, super relevant, and I'm super, super thankful, <laughs> many supers here, but I'm super thankful that you guys have the opportunity to experience that and um you know to get out there and to get involved is absolutely like just amazing and so um that's going to be kind of the subject of today's podcast honestly um i kind of wanted to give you guys some uh, some things to think about and as i set my phone down right here um some things to think about uh just in today's podcast um, we'll see how everything goes. Uh, usually, the podcasts are pretty, pretty straightforward. Me just kind of talking and and uh, you know giving whatever value that the Holy Ghost has given me and imparted to me to you guys. And so I hope that this podcast helps you. Okay, some of you guys uh, usually the podcasts are released. Uh, Friday mornings at 9 a.m. I don't know. Some of you guys may still be involved with conferences. Um, you guys may be listening to this later, or you guys may be, you know, coming back to this podcast because someone referred it to you, like myself, um, <laughs> because I probably will promote this podcast a lot over the next few days because of everyone getting off of the uh, the conference kind of season and stuff like that or coming out of it. So, Anyway, uh, what I wanted to give you guys, uh, hopefully it'll be pretty quick, but you know, the podcasts are, you know, roughly about an hour long, just so, you know, I can elaborate more on, uh, some of the subjects, uh, that are within the podcast. And so I'll do my best to, you know, kind of hit the, the highlights and just move through it. You guys have gotten so much dynamic preaching over the past, you know, 30, 45 days, whenever your conference or wherever your camp was, you guys have gotten so much. I'm not going to try to do any better than, you know, the best out there. And I'm just going to give you guys some things to think about when you're coming off of that conference or coming out of that conference mode, season, and modality. Okay. So here's a few things. Um, a lot of you guys have had some powerful experiences. And first, I want to acknowledge those. First, I actually want to acknowledge God. Okay. And, you know, I don't know if we if we take too much time to actually acknowledge God, <clears throat> excuse me, during these conferences, because sometimes I feel that we could be, you know, so juiced about the friends that we're meeting or maybe just the posts on social media that we're seeing from other people and their travels to that particular conference. Or maybe while there, you know, we're staying up after service, service ends at 10 and we're going to sleep at 2, only to wake up at 5 because we have to be somewhere at 7 before service that starts at 9. Right. So it's kind of like we're running, we're moving, we're going super fast. And oftentimes we can kind of forget about God, honestly, through the conference. Right. And through the kind of the, the entire conference prep. And then ultimately what happens after the conference is that we go back to, you know, kind of just our normal relationship with God. when we don't really take time to to thank him for the opportunity to go and, and the experience that we had there. So. 
I just real quick want to kind of set that out there. Maybe you guys can think about that. And if you guys haven't had the moment or haven't taken the time to thank God, um, not just the, you know, the five or 10 or 15, 20 minutes after service, right? I'm talking about like, even if it's like an hour or two or three, just to really thank him, like really make sure you got everything out. Make sure you opened your heart up. You kind of laid it out before God and you looked at everything that you were appreciative of that happened before the conference or during the conference and you can thank him for every single little thing. Some of you guys have met people, friends that you will have for lifetimes, right? Or at least that you feel you'll have for a lifetime that you should be thanking God for. Some of you guys had a particular minister pray for you and impart a certain gift to you that you should be thanking God that that experience happened. Or maybe some of you guys have met someone who you're, you it just end up, you know, it may be that that person is your future spouse, right? Your husband or your wife, right? You know, maybe you met them, okay? And that's, you know, a good thing. And maybe, you know, you should take time to thank God. Maybe you don't know where the relationship is going to go, but you can definitely thank him for, you know, the connection there. And not just thank you, Jesus, you know, stop in and run in like a, a little kid running uh, to your dad and say, Hey, Dad, you know, I just want to say thank you. Okay, bye. Boom. You know what I'm saying? But actually sit down and just like, you know, God, hey, here is everything. And you don't have to do this. Uh, you could do this silently as you're driving back to, uh, you know, your your home or maybe, you know, in the plane ride. You know, just even if it's just, I don't know, sometimes, you know, when I'm, I'll go through a city and, you know, be praying for that particular city. This happened just, I believe, yesterday. I was praying for that city. I had to put sunglasses on because tears we're coming to my face, right? And so sometimes even if you put the sunglasses on and kind of turn your head to the left, looking out of the window, you can, you know, rest your hand over your forehead and close your eyes deeply and just begin to recap everything and just thank God for it, okay? Because here's the deal, listen. God is our father, right? Just imagine some of you guys may be in a parental situation where you're a parent or maybe you guys aren't a parent right now, but Just imagine you have a child who never, ever thanked you for anything that you gave them. There's an inherent something inside of us that says, you know, I I, I, I don't know, I want to give more, but you're not being thankful and grateful. And some of you guys may be thinking like, Avo, you're taking too long on this thankfulness deal. But I promise you, if you get this thing dialed in and, you know, it's impossible for us to thank God for everything, but if you just completely like have a spirit of gratitude you have so much god will open up like floodgates just to pour blessing on you because he can get praise glory and gratitude from you and thankfulness from you okay so it maybe may behoove you to kind of lend your ear but here's the thing you're on your way back you you know you're 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 doing your deal and and like the analogy of you being a father or you being a mother and your child never really thanking you just imagine if you you know, uh, if you sacrificed, right, a, a lot to to get them to this conference, let's say the conference that you're going to, whether it was Peak or NYC or wh- whichever it was for you, right, you're looking and, and, and your parents put forth, you know, a couple thousand dollars in order to, to get you to that conference, right? And then not only that, when they were there, they, they, you know, because God's almighty, right, he orchestrates certain connections that you really do appreciate. But you never take time to say thank you. You just keep keep running through your day, keep running through your life, right? Then you get back to work and you get back to school and you or you get back home and you just keep moving, 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 never having the uh the the you know the I don't want to say some of the words that come to mind, but the I guess the sense, right? And not in a negative way, not saying that you're senseless and I don't want to sound like that, but you know, never having the the realization that hey, I should probably thank God for these things. Right. And so, you know, going back to the parent analogy, you're like, well, I, I, I love to give more, but but you're not being thankful. Right. And it's not like, I don't know, a lot of people could say a lot of different things, but that's kind of the reality of the situation. We want to give thanks to God. One of the prayers, one of the forms of prayer. Now, how, how is this like you have intercession? You have a, 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 a prayer, like you have conversational prayer, you have the Lord's prayer, you have all these different types of prayers and modalities of prayer, which is simply communication with God. And one of the major ones after supplication, after intercession, right, is thanksgiving. You just being thankful. God receives that as communication to him. You're just communicating, God, I love you. 
and one of the four pillars of prayer is thanksgiving, it has to be important. It has to be important. Okay? So you're praying and you're interceding and you're you're giving supplication prayer, right? If you're missing the the prayer of thanksgiving, you have a a a, a table with one leg missing. A four-sided table with one leg missing. Or you have a a, a, a you know a car without the the front tire. Okay? You're missing a major element. And if you want to think of it this way, maybe a one-fourth of all your prayer, you know, that you ever do in the mornings, in the evenings. Hopefully you guys are praying in the mornings and the evenings. Or middays. Maybe you're praying three times a day. If if one it just may be that 25% of all the prayer that you give God should be Thanksgiving. It could be. I mean, that's kind of like the formula we're seeing in the Bible, if we want to take it super literally. But, you know, it just kind of gets you guys thinking like, hey, say say thank you. You know, it's proper manners in the in the natural, okay, between you and an adult, you and a friend, you know, hey, say thank you. No, seriously. And dealing with God, let's make sure that we say thank you. So if you haven't said thank you to Jesus, spent like a couple minutes in deep thought, examining everything that he's done for you and saying thank you for those things, not just, oh, thank you for that, thank you for that, thank you for that, thank you for that, but thank you, God, for giving me this opportunity. You didn't need, I, you didn't need to let me, okay, but you desired and you wanted me, you allowed me to go. Thank you for that. You know, it's funny, God, is because I was standing at the altar on the left side that Thursday night, you know, that that particular man of God, I saw his his face, his eyes snapped towards mine, and he looked at me, and, and I knew that there was something there, and and you had heard me pray about three or four months ago that I wanted this particular gift, and I know that particular man of God operates within that gift, and I don't know, maybe you sent him over to me because he did come over and lay his hands on me. And he began to pray. And as he was praying, I felt an impartation. And God, I may not know exactly what an impartation feels like, but it felt like I received something from him. And if that was you, I want to say thank you for that. And we'll see in the future what you do and and how this gift works out. But I have faith and I truly believe that there is an impartation. I received something that that man of God held. And God, today I just want to say thank you for that. And you know what else happened, God? And you just keep going, and you just keep going, and you just keep going. Okay, so really take some time um, whenever you listen to this podcast to go and thank God, right? And I want to thank God for the Yappa 238 and the things that he's allowed me to experience with the Yappa 238, the friends that have DM'd me and said, hey, can we get a picture together at NYC? Hey, are you going to be at NYC? Hey, where are you? I need to know where your meetup's going to be. Hey, where are you in the stadium? And I'm sitting there like, I cannot, I, I'm not there. <laughs> right? I would have never had those connections. Never would have had, you know, a couple thousand people, <clears throat> excuse me, wanting to, you know, to connect with me if it wasn't for God. Literally, Yappa 238 came out of a prayer room. Not something conjured up in the mind of a man. Right. And so I want to say thank you to God for that opportunity and for this opportunity. And the fact that you're even listening to this podcast right now, I'm thankful to God. And so I bring him to the forefront, bring him on stage and say, hey, look, this is the reason why I have the opportunity to do what I do. It's because of God. And this is the reason why I have the opportunity to minister to you guys. It's because of God. The the microphone that I'm recording into is because of God, the phone that I'm you know, gathering this data on is because of God. And the voice that I have is because of God. And the energy that I have is because of God. And the eyesight that I have in order to even see the Yappa 238 (laughs) to read (laughs) is coming from God. And the mental faculties and the energy, all that I am and all that I have is because of this man from Galilee, whose name is Jesus Christ. He gives me the power and by him I consist. It's the only reason why I'm here. The Bible says something that's interesting, and I have it on my lock screen. I I love entrepreneurship. I love business, and I love, you know, tinkering with business ideas and throwing things around and the the grind, the hustle of it all. But I have something. It's Deuteronomy. uh, Let me see if I can catch it. Excuse me. Catch it real quick. I have it as my wallpaper on my phone. But it very simply says this, and I think it's super powerful and super relevant. 
but it says, uh, this is Deuteronomy 8, 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And I sit there and I, and I have it as my wallpaper and with all my other goals and dreams and stuff like that. And I have it sitting there and just, just, just to keep myself in check. Remember, it's God that gives you power to even get wealth. Because there was a covenant that he had with someone maybe in 1908. He, he gave a word to someone that said there would be a certain type of revival that comes. Or maybe in 2008. There was someone that, that there was in, in a prayer meeting and they were, they were interceding and God said, hey, look, this is how revival is going to come and this is what I'm going to do and this is how it's going to happen. I'm making a covenant with you. I'm not going to leave your kids. I'm not going to leave your grandkids. I'm not going to leave your great grandkids. And it just may be that with the work of Yappa 238 that I'm touching their grandkids and I'm, and I'm you, know, you see what I'm saying? That I'm by the grace of God and by the mercies of God, I'm standing in the position, standing in the way, standing in the, in the place where I can minister to the young people to the to the grandkids and to the the kids or whoever it is of this person who had a covenant with God who who consecrated themselves to God and God established a covenant with them and God's just using me to fill the gap because he needed some he needs someone to 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 be in the gap to fulfill that covenant I don't know God you know things are complicated in the spirit I don't know what's going on right but that's very well could be so I know I took major like a good hey, this is the fourth of the podcast talking about Thanksgiving. <laughs> what a coinkadink. <laughs> but anyway, um, no, seriously, just say take, take time to just thank God. Like seriously. I just you know, I'm feeling like just I don't know, go to a beach somewhere. Um, if there's, you know, no one on the on the beach with you <laughs> dressed inappropriately. Um, let's say going to the mountains, looking out over the mountains. I know Tahoe is just about two hours from me. I, I can imagine myself going up there and just looking out at the vast wilderness and, and over the lake or something and just, you know, having a good two, three hours where I'm writing and penning things. I may do that, <laughs> writing and penning things down of things I'm thankful for and grateful for. Spending a Saturday doing that or Sunday doing that. Do you know what you would unlock in your spirit? Not just the spirit world and the heavens, but your spirit would be absolutely powerful. No, you won't be competing. I know I'm taking a long time on this subject, but I'm just going to, I'm going to stop when I feel to stop, okay? Because we need this Thanksgiving stuff, right? But can you imagine what you, you you would, you would, if you guys are struggling with comparing yourself with with someone else, Thanksgiving will, will remedy that. If you're struggling with insecurities, Thanksgiving will remedy that. You're grateful. Why? Because you're think, when you're insecure, you're thinking of all the things, oh, I, I can't do this, or I'm not good at this, and I'm not good at that. I'm, not good, I'm below average. I'm below this or below that. So you're thinking of yourself coming from like a negative con- connotation, negative context. You're going downwards. When gratitude, it goes to the things and say, hey, it goes to things and say, hey, look, I'm, I'm thankful for this. And it lifts you up. We beat ourselves up so much, Right? And the thing is that when you're insecure, when you get what you want without dealing with the major insecurity, you begin to act in a proud way. It's like it's like almost inevitable because you feel you got something now, but you really are acting from a place of insecurity. So pride, Thanksgiving will remedy that if you're struggling with pride. If you're struggling with insecurity, Thanksgiving will, re- will remedy that. Okay, it's funny. It's like it's like the medicine. It's like the medicine of the Bible. <laughs> Having a Thanksgiving, a, a spirit of Thanksgiving, right? If you're impatient, Thanksgiving will remedy that. I'm just thankful for this opportunity. I mean, I mean, I don't know if I should continue, but um, y'all catch my wavelength. You all catch my drift. Okay, cool. So, Jesus, I do. What you all need to do. Hey, Jesus. Like, but seriously, guys, um, yeah, if you're if you're struggling with certain things, you know, um, uh, lust, pride, ego, arrogance, right? Or you say, you know, how does this all apply? Trust me, just take the Thanksgiving deal. Just try it. It's almost like uh, it's almost like you have pain in your elbow. Just take the Advil, take the Tylenol, and see if it helps. Okay, if it's if the same thing that's going to help your elbow, the same thing that's going to help your left pinky toe. Okay. It, if there's pain there, if there's pain in your elbow, the Advil, the Tylenol is going to remedy it. If you're, if you're struggling with insecurity or you're struggling with pride, just take the Thanksgiving pill, okay? 
That stuff's going to help. Okay, cool. So now on to our podcast. I'm sorry. I really had to say that because, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, okay. I was, I was going to say, like, this is a podcast. This is, you know, God's deal. It's not mine. Um, so I had to say that until I just got it off me. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, okay, so. Okay, so here's some things I want you guys to know. You guys are coming off the conference high. You said thank you, Jesus, for the conference, right? Uh, okay, you have friends. You got pictures on Instagram. You grew like 25, 50 followers because that game of mafia that you played Friday night at 1 a.m. Okay, so you're there, right? <laughs> you're, you're good. You're coming back home. You're listening to this podcast. There's a few things I want to go back to. Okay, obviously the friendship's great, and I, you know we could talk about how to develop friendships. Maybe we'll do that sometime in Yappa 238's future. We'll talk about how to def- develop friendships. You made the connection, how to like be there and stuff like that. Okay? But let's rewind back to the services. We're gonna really dig into what happened at the altar. Okay, what you got during the service, and really, really, again, what happened at the altar. So what happens is during the service, you're picking, you're, you're, get, you're gathering data, right? You're gathering the word of God. Seeds are being broadcast. And if you're paying attention and really interested and really engaged in the service, you're picking up, excuse me, seeds that were being broadcast from the preacher. The man of God went forth to sow and he was sowing and you were picking the pieces up and putting it into your heart's field so that it can grow and germinate and uh, and make you a better person. Okay, so that was what's happening. Then some of the seeds that came, you're like, whoa, wait a sec. This applies to me right this second. This applies to me right now. This is giving me insight into the future into what i should do in like when i get back home okay so now, so you're taking that in right and then what happens at the altar you're like you throw your hands in the air you're like oh god i commit this to you i commit that to you god i repent of this and god i repent of that god i i, I want to do this for your kingdom i want to do that for your kingdom god in fact i want you to use me this way and i want you to so you're starting to submit all these prayer requests to heaven now here's the not the, here's a problem okay god hears your prayers i don't care if you feel him feel him hearing you or not okay last time i checked you guys are hearing me right now. You don't feel me. He, you don't. I don't feel you hearing me, and you don't feel me like my waves. Unless you have the the volume blasted super loud, you don't feel the sound waves hitting your ears. Okay, that's kind of like you know, so. When you pray to God, you don't feel Him hearing you. Okay, so you're you're submitting these prayers all like up to heaven, right? And He's just taking that in. So He oh He He surrenders all to me. Okay. Now, just in this podcast and in, in Yappa 238, if I ever speak in the context of God, I'm doing it like, you know, just to get, get us in our head, like where we're at. And, and I don't mean any disrespect in any way, shape or form, but just to help us in our mind to understand the message that's trying to be conveyed. So he's taking, he's like, okay, you surrender all to me. So that means I have, I can own all of you. And when you say, God, do whatever you want in my life, God, I want to be used by you. God said, okay, I can do whatever he wants in my life or she wants in my, in, in their life. And I could, so he's taking all this information in because you're the one that's coming from your mouth, right? Your heart's open and stuff like that. So I want to focus in on those who have committed to do something for God. Okay. You've committed to win your city. You've committed to win your school. You committed to witness to someone. You committed to bring someone to next NAYC. You committed to disciple someone to nurture a babe in Christ. Okay. Which means a baby. Okay. Fellas, you know what I'm saying? Like back up off, back up off the ladies. You let her, you let her get in church before you start trying to make any moves. And then you wait about seven to 10 or 15 years my goodness, I've been, I've seen so many people aborted because they got into a relationship too early in the church. They're two years in the church, they get in a relationship, and they're out of church. With someone in the church, it's like, you guys, just because they get into church does not mean they're free game, okay? They're supposed to be free, like, they're supposed to be having a relationship with Jesus first, okay? So, we're talking about babies in Christ. Okay, so anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, sorry, kind of off the subject, but a little rabbit trail right there, fellas. Ladies, if if you see a good looking guy get in church, let Jesus get a hold of him before you try to claim him. Okay. Talk to your pastors if you have any questions about that. Anyway, so you're 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 you committed to do something for God, right? Um, or maybe you committed to step into the the calling he has for you or the role he has for you, the ministry he has for you. You said, God, I'm gonna do it. Okay, so I want to focus in on you guys, okay. And those of you guys who actually made those commitments. Because if you made those commitments, that is a 
very big deal. It's not empty words. Okay? God spoke and created everything. He created man in his own image. So when we speak, we have power with our words to create things. Okay? That kind of sounds like it kind of can be abstract, but it's not really abstract when you really think about it. If I say something to you that's negative, it can create a negative emotion inside of you. If I say, I mean, it, it, it and it can go a lot of different places from there. But so when we speak, so when we spoke to God, our, our God heard us and you're telling the king of the universe, the Bible says, I believe in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 5, don't make vain, you know, uh, uh, haphazard commitments to God. Don't, don't do that. Okay, because he's a lot he's a lot more real than you just doing whatever you feel like to do with him. Right. He's not he's not he he is God almighty. It's not like you're in a field just yelling out to the air random stuff. No, you are praying to God. And the thing is that we are in covenant with God, which means we have a spirit. We know him. We are in blood covenant with him. We are his bride. We're that close to him. When we're talking to him, he's listening. So if you're making these, you know, commitments to him, you best be ready to follow through. And if you made a commitment that you were kind of iffy, like about making, you have two options. Either you brought, bring that up back up to God, say, Hey God, I said something that I don't know. I need your grace to help me with because I, I kind of went some places that I don't know I sh- if I should be there. Or you just, you know, hit the gas and just go into that commitment um, and wisdom. So anyway, you made these commitments. I want to I want to show you guys something just real quick. Oftentimes what happens and I've seen this and I've seen I've seen this for probably a decade now, close to nine, eight, nine years, actually close to nine. I'll say yeah, maybe even 10. I've seen this like just play out. And what happens is, uh, you know, and this is the reality of the situation, okay? A lot, you know, a lot of people are coming from the, the conference hype and the conference high, you know, oh, God's great and God's victorious and all this great stuff, which he is and it's true. But you, but you have this, like, your your emotions are kind of high. And so, you, you know, generally when emotions are high, you may not be thinking logically. That's why some people can come out from a prayer meeting and have a head-to-head with their pastor or head-to-head with their parents because they're not thinking logically because the Bible says that you submit to your man of God and to your parents and to your spiritual authority, okay? So what happened in the prayer room is that you got on this emotional spirit or spiritual emotional high and then it was challenged by your spiritual authority and your parents. And this is all saying, you know, claiming, uh, you know, if, you're, if your man of God is, is a solid man of God and if your parents are solidly in church, okay, that they're your spiritual authority. If you knew they're your spiritual authority before you stepped into this into the prayer room, they're going to still be your spiritual authority when you come out of the prayer room. You hear something in the spirit, remember the devil can come as an angel of light, okay? Remember Paul said, if, if any angel, any man or angel comes to you preaching another gospel, then the one that I just gave to you, let him he be accursed, okay? Right? So, and he, he said it again, right after that. He said, I'm going to say it to you one more time, okay? I'm going to say it to you again, because it's that serious. So you can hear something in prayer that may not be the voice of God. That's why you got to run about past your spiritual authority and the word of God, which they know the word of God, oftentimes more than you, but you run it past both. Okay, so I say that to say that you're on this emotional high in the prayer room and then you get to the reality of the situation. So what happens with conferences is that you go on this emotional high and then you hit the reality of the situation. What happened was you were during your emotional high, right? And in the spiritual high, I'm not negating anything that happens spiritually. But what I'm saying is that you're, you're, so you're emotionally high, your spirit's high, your soul is high. You're like, whoo, man, God is great. You, this like euphoric state, right? God is so amazing. And then what happens though, during that time is you start making all these commitments to God and what you're going to do, right? You made the commitments. The commitments have nothing to do with emotion, except that it came from a place of emotion, but they're still commitments. Like, it's like you still did your deed. It's almost like a drunk driver. They're drinking and, or, or people will say like, well, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was drunk. Yeah. Well, you make the decision to get drunk, right? And the repercussions come and everything that you said during your drink, that still ties back to you, even though you made that decision. So in the positive light and in the church arena, you're on the spiritual high, you say something, right? That it, it, it make a commitment to God. That commitment is still valid no matter if you're high or low. 
Okay, and you would want God's commitments to you to be valid, whether he was, uh, you know, happy with you or, you know, not happy with you. You would want his commitments to be valid. So vice versa, he wants our commitments to be valid. And so when we say something on the emotional high, it is a valid. Okay, it's a valid commitment. Now, then what happens is we, after the, the service happens and after the conference and we begin to cool down after, you know, a couple of days, you know, four or five days, it's Wednesday, Thursday of the next week, seven to nine days later, right? And you totally forgot, generally, this is what happens to people, they totally forget the commitments that they made to God. They totally forget that like, yeah, God, I kind of said that I was going to win my city, but whew, man, I got some, there's a, it's a lot of people up in this city. Or, yeah, God, I said I was going to win my high school, but I mean, man, it's just, it's just easier to conform, like, it's just easier to go with the flow. Right, so it's like a com- a commitment that you made that isn't really being followed through on. So what I want to do is I want to help you guys follow through on your commitments. First, I want to bring that awareness to you that hey, listen, when you make those commitments to God, they're actually valid. They're like legit commitments. You said something that you were gonna do. You got to follow through. You did it. You put your word out there, right? You you know you got to. You have to, right? Unless. God, you know, God gives you mercy and you start, you know, reeling yourself back in. But nine times out of 10, this place can't, this, th- your commitment came from a place in the heart, right? Just because the emotions amplified that particular place of the heart doesn't mean that what you committed didn't come from a place that it's somewhere deep inside of you. Okay. So you got to go call on that thing deep inside of you and pull that to the surface and be like, yo, bro, yo, sis, we are about to attack what we told God we were going to attack, right? If you made the commitment to him, you got to follow through. I hope this is like not too hard of a saying, but like, it's true. You got to follow through. If you told God you're going to win your city, if you told you, and I'm not saying that you have like, okay, when we talk about, when we say certain things like win your city, um, you know, obviously, you know, not every single soul in the city is going to be saved. Now that can be the case. Okay. We see in the book of Acts and in the New Testament that there was like entire cities that turned to God. Okay, think Nineveh. The entire city did. Okay, like the entire city. So it could be your city and you got to find that out, which means you have to have a conversation with every single person in your city. Now you're thinking, well, that's impossible. Jonah did it. Paul said that he would become any, 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 uh, anyone to any man. It has everything. It has nothing to do with if you can or not. It has everything to do with your commitment. Okay. Well, how do I do that? I mean, I mean, that's it. It's a little door knock. Or you know, ask Starbucks. Hey, have you heard about Jesus? That simple. To every single individual, because you said you're going to win the city, right? <laughs> It's a hard saying, right? It's like, oh man, I got to put in the work. Hey, what if you did it for five years, 10 years straight? Do you realize the type of revival? Everybody and their mom will be talking about you from every church in the entirety of the world. Okay, well, definitely North America. Everyone will be talking about the young person who actually did that. Everybody. I don't care who they are. I don't care what their background they're coming from. They will be talking about the kid who is, is, is literally trying to win everybody in their city. Why? Because everybody says, I want to win my city. But they're talking about like, I want to win like, you know, some of my city. I want to win like 25% or maybe a good, a solid 10% of my city. Look, there's only 40,000 people. A good 4,000. I'll be good. I'll be good. I, I'm not trying to win my, my entire city. I just want to win, you know, some of my city. But I'm going to say entire city because it's cool to say, I want to win my whole city. I want to win my city. You know what I'm saying? But I promise you, if you want to get, like, the apostolic movement's attention, go try to win your entire city. Every every last 46,742 people, every last one of them teach every single one of Bible study. Or unless they, like, completely, and then you will find out, right? So, anyway, okay, so going back to commitments, right? I challenge one of you guys to do that. I promise you. You guys will be like bomb fire and you will have some type like God will be so with you. It would not even be funny, but you got to be led by your spiritual authority because like there's sometimes like what happened in the book of Acts. God forbade Paul to go preach somewhere. Got to be sensitive to the spirit and your spiritual authority. But anyway, so you make these commitments to God. I know I've got to take a long time with this podcast, but we're only 35 minutes in, right? Roughly. Um, 
So you you have all these commitments. You're making all these commitments to God. You got to follow through on on them. Okay. So I want to give you guys kind of an idea, maybe even a blueprint, a step by step, to in order to actually follow through. The first thing is you got to revisit the Word. You got to go back to the Word of God. You got to go back to the Word that you gave Him too. Revisit your Word. So write that down somewhere if you can. Put it in your phone. Maybe check the comments and the the area wherever we could put this and and see if we we have it down there first thing i do is revisit the word (laughs) rvtw revisit the word seriously or (laughs) rtw revisit the word so what i mean by that is you got to go back to the commitments that you made you got to do your best to pull every single one of them out of memory okay into plain view okay and then write it down write it down Say, okay, well, I told God I was going to win my city. I told God that uh, I was going to stay focused on him and I'll get, get wrapped up in a girlfriend. Um, I told God that I was, a, or a boyfriend. Um, I told God that uh, I was going to, you know, um, pray three hours a day. And these are to those who actually, you know, and you felt the validation of the Holy Ghost because some of you guys you haven't prayed, you know, a second uh, in, the, in the past, like only since the conference and you're already trying to hit three hours a day or four hours a day or five hours a day, uh, you know, you may want to grow into that over a couple of years, but, or months, or you can go cold turkey and just try to do it that way. Um, I'm a fast, like uh, a day, a day a week and I'm going to do it. So you got to read and just write it down, whatever it is, write it all out. You're going to read it to the word and you're going to look at it. Why? Because you're going, it's almost like a, a fresh, like a fresh where you're going to put it in your eyes. You're going to put it in your eyes so you see it and say, oh, oh, that's what I said to God. Wow. And I said a lot. Okay. Then, okay, if you felt a confirmation in the Holy Ghost, when you were praying those prayers, you're going to put a little check by it. Okay. And if you didn't, don't put anything by it. So at the end of the sen- sentence, at the end of your little period, put a check if you felt a confirmation from the Holy Ghost, okay? Because listen, you can say things that are not God's will that you're going to do. God, I'm going to, uh, I don't know, I'm going to go uh, to this particular city and I'm going to start a church in that city. And God did not call you to start no church in that city. God called you to be right where you're at and to help your pastor sit under his feet, okay? But you told God you're going to do this thing and you committed to God, right? And, And But God, that's not the will, so he didn't confirm it. There wasn't that confirmation in your spirit. Okay, so if that's the case and you didn't feel any confirmation, don't put anything next to it. Okay, if you did feel a confirmation in your spirit, you know, like, okay, I'm gonna go center in my pastor's feet because that's where I feel I need to be right now, God. And God's like, yes, that's right. Then you put a little check mark by it. If you didn't feel anything, don't put anything by it. If you're unsure, put a little like a flat line, like a little hyphen, just bling. Like, I'm kind of unsure at the moment. Okay. But And the way you're going to be sure about it or not is by revisiting the entire scenario. That's why you got to look at it to say, oh, yeah, I, I, read, I, I said that to God. And then you're going to replay it in your head where you're at, what you're doing, and, and pull that feeling out again to see if God gave that confirmation or not. Okay? So now you have this. So that's the first thing. You're going to revisit the word. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to run it past your spiritual authority, RSA. Run it past your spiritual authority. (laughs) Seriously, run it past your spiritual authority. Okay? You're going to have, you know, a a talk with your your mom and dad, you know, after Sunday morning service. Or, you know, maybe you're going to ask your pastor Sunday morning if, you know, hey, can I talk to you maybe this week Thursday? You know, or this week Wednesday. And what's the best time for you, pastor? Just have a quick question. It'll be 15 minutes. Right? You're going to talk to your, and then you're going to set that time to say, okay, listen, I was in prayer. This is what happened. And this is what I said at the conference. I'm not too sure about this thing. I didn't feel God confirm anything about this thing, but this thing, I I really feel like it resonates in my spirit. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. I am, this is really good. (laughs) But anyway, um, no glory to man is just doing my best to be led by the spirit. Okay. So then you're going to be like, okay, God, this, 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 and that, right? And then you're going to run it past your spiritual authority. You're talking to your parents about it. And this is what I feel. And after you talk to your parents, you're going to talk to your pastor. Because nine times out of ten, your pastor will be like, what did your parents say? <laughs> Especially if you're a young person. If you're not really, you know, or if you don't have parents in church, you're going to talk to your pastor, right? Um, or someone else that, he, that you know, uh, is set up as your spiritual authority according to 
uh, the authority of your spiritual authority, which is your pastor. So um, <clears throat> anyway, so you're going to communicate. You're going to stay in communication. And then if they give the green light, which is a, okay, you know, I feel you should do this. Or, hey, if that's what the Spirit is, is calling you to do, then you need to do it. But you're com- you come into the meeting. You come into this into the, the, the time that you're going to meet with your parents and your spiritual authority. Submit it to what they say. you got to clearly convey that. Okay, say, Pastor, I am submitted to what, you're, what you tell me. Mom, Dad, I'm submitted to what, whatever you tell me. So I need to let you know that before we move in. Or if they already know, which they should already know that you're submitted to them. Right. And not just by words, but by deed. Like, you, you know, pastor said, no, don't do that. And you're like, OK, pastor, I won't do that. Like, you know, come on, guys. That's 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 legit living for God. OK. Um, anyway, so um, so so if you if you haven't had that, like clear communication, make sure you have to have that there unless they absolutely know within their hearts of hearts. Like my parents, my parents, like if they feel like there's something there, like where if I'm not being submitted, um, they'll go check that. They'll be like, yo, um, I mean, not maybe they won't, th- they won't say yo, but they'll like, hey, there's a little, you got a little problem right there. It kind of feels like you're, you're, uh, you're not really hearing what we're saying, right? And if you're not really hearing what you're saying, you need to check it from the neck up, okay? And that's the kind of straightforward stuff that anybody needs, right? And, you know, I don't know, you know, yeah, <laughs> that's just what people need. So, um, so I can trust them. So I may not give that disclaimer at the beginning, right? I just go straight for the talk and the conversation. You see what I'm saying? See, I can trust them like that um, to keep me in check. But you definitely want to have that like disclaimer at the beginning uh, just to make sure, you know, your spiritual authority knows that, hey, listen, like I am submitted to what you are going to tell me or, you know, make sure, you know, what I when I come in from this conference and everything, what I feel I got I got to make sure it's submitted to you so that I can stay in alignment and that everything flows good for the next 10, 15, 20 years of my life. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the first thing you're going to want to do or second thing you're you're going to want to do if I can talk, my goodness. Um, but yeah, so then after that, uh, you, you run it past them and you find out your next step. Okay, maybe your parents kind of already know like, okay, yeah, this is something that I saw in your future and this is what you should probably do next. Or maybe your pastor was like, hey, that sounds like a great idea. Do this right now, right? And so now you're, you're, now you're knowing your next step, okay? So we got the, the writing it out part. We talked your spiritual authority. Now you're finding out your next step. Or maybe that's something you have to do. Maybe your parents, your pastor, your spiritual authority is just like, yo, okay, get in the prayer room, find out what God wants you to do next, and then go with that. Or maybe it could be locked up inside of you. You already know what God wants you to do next. Maybe you were, you know, at, at the altar and you got that thing. Okay, I'll do this and then I'll do that. Or, uh, you know, you're on your way back and you're meditating on it. You're thinking about it. You're thanking the Lord for the awesome services and stuff like that. You have your head rested up, uh, on the on the window and you're kind of just looking out there and you feel something drop into your spirit. Okay, not all the time is God have to vocally say, you know, hey, this is what you do, right? Sometimes he can just let it come to you, right? So wherever, you know, whatever it is, you have to be confident that the next step is the next step you're going to take. And that confidence comes from knowing it came from Jesus, okay? So wherever it comes from, like even if God whispers something to your spirit, but, you know, uh, you know, don't spend the next three or five or six months trying to figure out if that thing that the Lord whispered into your spirit is actually from him and not do anything. OK, it's better that you have faith that, OK, God, I believe you spoke to me. I'm going to take this action and we'll see what's on the other side of this than for you to waste time contemplating or fleecing God. If you must, as this is from what I've heard and what what I've been taught do your best not to fleece God. Don't flee. What I mean by fleecing God is back then going to the, going to the story of Gideon. He laid the fleece out. God, let it be wet. God, let it be dry. Let it be wet on the ground. Let it be, you know, dry on the ground. Let it be. And he, he asked God to, to really validate. Now, God didn't, you know, he didn't, I guess, I don't know if he didn't mind, but um, uh, he allowed that fleecing to happen to Gideon so Gideon could really know because he was very like unsure about himself, right? Well, you don't, if you have a word from God, you want to show God that you're proactive. You want to show God that you're like, hey, if you, if God, if I get a word, I'm going to go do it. 
no matter how crazy it sounds. Because if you're walking down the street and you see a woman in the wheelchair, God says, hey, go over there and pray for her. You want to be, you want to exercise that, that muscle of being obedient to God immediately. Immediate obedience, okay? I-O, immediate obedience. <laughs> anyway, so you got to find the next step. Figure out that next step. If it's um, and, and listen, the next step may scare you. Okay, if none of the steps scare you, it's probably not like the best thing for you to be doing. Okay, well, let me say that. Let me say, let me take that back. If God told you to do it, it is the best thing to be doing. So forgive me for that statement. But what I'm saying is, if none of the steps scare you, um, you're probably not walking on water. You're probably not on the edge of the boat like, okay, God, can I jump into this? It's probably not something that's deep. It's probably not something that, yeah, you know, because even if God said, you know, submit yourself to your pastor for the next two years and you do that, okay, pastor's going to be watching you. Pastor's going to be like on, he's going to be he's going to be eyeing you to see how you respond. And after seven months of you showing that you respond in a heart of, of, of servanthood and stuff, he may be like, okay, it's time for you to take the mic. Take the mic for five minutes before I, before I get up there. That's scary. That's a step, but it's a step within the entire process that may scare you. It stretches you. It makes you become more. And because, listen, if you do not, find, if you don't encounter like that scariness stuff, right? That thing that, that makes you nervous. And th- if you don't encounter that, you'll never have that fallback on Jesus. Where you're like, okay, God, I really don't think I can do this. I really need your help. And then you let God come through for you. Then you'd be like, oh, yeah, that God. And then if you're honest, you would say, you know, God gets the glory out of that, that. That You know, I was super scared and nervous, but I prayed and God helped me. Right. So, OK, so the next step may be scary, but you got to figure out the next step. You got to take that next step. Now, I'm talking to myself maybe like seven times over because there's certain there's a certain thing right now that God told me to do. I feel like he told me to do. He's leading me to do. And I'm like, oh, God, that's kind of scary, though. <laughs> So I was speaking to myself first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, okay? Eighth, ninth, tenth, okay? Twelfth. Um, because I know, like, there's this thing, and I'm like, oh, man. But anyway, so um, I got a big smile on my face, cheeky smile on my face, because I'm like, oh, got to go do it. But anyway, so it's like, it's nerve-wracking. It's putting myself out there even more than just what Yappa Tooth today it is. It's like, ugh, blah. But I found that I know the next step. Okay, and you commit to that next step. Just say, I don't care what happens in this universe. Okay, because God's outside of the universe. I don't care what happens inside of this universe. A comment from like the Geonome 35th century quintillion four nebula can fly into Mars and a Martian rock flies into Earth and hits my car. I don't care what happens. I will do this thing no matter what. <laughs> I'm committing to this thing. I will do this. Okay. And I'm laughing because I need to get to that commitment. <laughs> okay. Because there's times I noticed the times where I really went in on things. The times I really did something that I felt God called me to do. And I really got committed about it. It flourished beyond my wildest dreams. Okay. So. If you commit, now you commit, you say, I'm going to take that next step. I'm going to obey. There's times in my life where I don't feel good about myself. I don't feel good about what I'm, not that I'm doing bad things, but I don't feel good about what I'm doing because it seems so redundant. It seems like I'm doing the same thing over and over again. It seems like there's no end to the thing that I'm doing. It seems like this and seems like that. And then I'm like, okay, but I got to commit myself. I got to throw myself into obedience. I got to throw my hooks and my anchors of obedience over into that, into those waters, over onto that, you know, uh, that anchor and and pull myself towards that because sometimes I don't want to do it because of how I feel, but I know I can do it because I have dominion over my members, which means I can lift my right arm up and then my right arm goes up. I lift my left arm up. My left arm goes up. If I can physically do it, okay, I can force myself to physically do it and I'll be in obedience, even though my feelings is way back there. And I'm really feeling like I don't want to do this because I'm scared. I'm nervous. I'm whatever. Right. So, and then sometimes in those instances, you have to address the head game, right? What I call the head game, what's going on in your head, you know, whether it's fear or insecurity or doubt or whatever it is, you know, if that's going on, I have to address it, right? There's signs where I had to corner myself and say, okay, what, how, why am I feeling this way? Am I feeling inadequate because I'm comparing myself 
one to another like the Bible says I shouldn't do? Or am I feeling a little jealous? Like, is, is, am I spying jealousy there? Well, no, wait a second. You got to go dress it. You got to figure it out. You're like, okay, this thing needs to die right here, right now. Right? I need to quit comparing myself with that person. I got to remember that. That's my brother, sister, or whatever it is. Not saying that has happened too many times. I've probably like one, once or twice or twice, maybe over the past like three, four years. But the thing is, it's not that, because here's the deal. You, everyone will be visited with the flesh, doing flesh things that I ain't supposed to be doing. So before anybody tries to criticize me <laughs> for being transparent, you know you dealt with it yourself, okay? I just figured out that if I can deal with it and put it in God's hands, take care of the problem, it's it's good. And I don't have to struggle with it no more anymore. Excuse me, I'm kind of getting a little a little real with y'all, you know what I'm saying? The lingo coming out, no I'm kidding. But anyway, so <laughs> I'm just totally joking. So no, seriously though. So you got to corner, you got to figure out what's going on in your head in order to make sure that you're moving forward in the right direction. Is there impurity? Do I need to repent more? Because I know, yeah, I mean, I didn't do anything explicitly sinful, but I got this weight that needs to come off me, right? Where are you at? You got to be transparent. You got to be real. You got to take that next step, okay? Or excuse me, commit to the first step. And then your commitment is going to drive you to your first and drive you through into your second and your third, and your fourth, and your fifth, and now you're picking up momentum. You got to keep momentum going, okay? So let's say you, let's throw some examples out there. You told God you're going to win the city. You told God you're going to win your high school, okay? Listen, the first, okay, let me give you this, to get this there have been numerous times over the past six to eight months I've been extremely nervous, extremely fearful, not in a negative way, but still it was fear, extremely fearful about doing a certain activity. Like there's so many times I'm thinking of right now, a certain activity. I'm like, dude, I'm scared to do it. I'm nervous to do it. I can kind of see my fingers shaking a little bit. There's definitely dryness in my vocal cords and I definitely got a quaky voice. This is very like nerve wracking. I'm even like, <laughs> like thinking about what I was doing. It's, it's really bad. Right? I don't want to do it. It's not a good deal. It's not a good deal. But I push past that. Okay? And what I want to let you guys know is that the build up to the event is always 98% of the time, maybe 93%, 92% of the time, is oftentimes worse than the event itself. Okay? So what I mean by that is me going out and talking to that particular individual and trying to establish that connection is the the, the buildup to it, the fear that's happening until that point comes, until that event comes, is often worse than the event itself, right? So let's take it where, to an example that everyone can understand, okay? Girl talks to guy, guy talks to girl. Guy, guy sees cute girl. Okay, ladies, I'm going to kind of bust on the fellas a little bit. They see a cute girl like, whoa, wait a second. Oh, whew. good Lord. Hold on. just I got to take a seat real quick, right? So he's looking at you and he's thinking that you are amazing. You're like the prettiest thing since, pre since pretty. Since the word pretty, okay? Since the English language formulated that word, you're just, you're just um, gorgeous. And so, okay, the build up to the event, his heart's pounding. His, he, he, he can't even swallow. He's sweating already, not because he saw you. He's sweating because he wants to go connect with you. He wants to go talk with you. He wants to make and establish a connection. And because of that, he's getting nervous, right? So it's not that just because you're pretty, you you know, fellas get nervous. And I think it's on the, the guy's or girl's perspective as well. Just because the guy is an attractive and handsome dude doesn't necessarily mean that she's getting nervous because he's attractive more so because she may she wants to know if he thinks she's attractive right or maybe the guy wants to think you know does the girl think i'm attractive the guy wants to talk to girls there's, there's like an uh, uh like an attraction like literally an attraction like a, a south and north magnet they're coming together right there's that pool and so that pool the fear is in the pool the fear is in the build-up the fear is in like okay man how's this gonna go right Right, and then they start thinking about rejection. They start thinking about all these things. They make the whole deal worse. When in the rea the reality of the situation is, is that if guy goes talks to girl, and if girl you know has conversation with guy, right? If that happens, that actual event is going to be a lot better than the build up to the event. 
Notice, fellas, you ever talk to the girl, you ever been in this scenario, you stop sweating, you get cool, you get comfortable once the conversation begins to flow. It's cool, right? It's it, There's nothing wrong. Like, the event itself is better than the buildup to the event. Ladies, when he starts talking to you and, and you start feeling comfortable, you're like, okay, this wasn't that bad, right? Or maybe it's a first date deal. Dude's nervous. He's like, oh my goodness, am I going to say the right thing? Am I wearing the right thing? I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to bring any personal examples there, but it's like, you know, you're nervous, you're thinking about all this, and then when you get there, it's like, hey, it's all cool, nothing, it's just like, whatever, right? How much time do I have? I hope I'm not taking too much time, I'm going to hurry up. Oh, I'm almost done. Okay, so I got five minutes, let's wrap this thing up. Okay, so... You're, the build up to the event is always worse than the event. So you're looking at that first step. You're looking at the next step. Okay, you know whatever it is, whenever that that real big scary beast of a hindrance or an event begins to like play out in your mind, you gotta go make that contact. You gotta go find this person. You gotta go follow this person, or you got to go, you know, preach the sermon. You gotta go witness to a friend. You gotta go whatever it is, witness to a colleague. And you're thinking, well, my job. And you're thinking of this. And that. Listen, listen. The buildup, the buildup is always going to be worse than the actual event itself. Well, what if they don't accept Jesus? What if they don't, you know, talk, what if they, what if they don't want to talk in tongues right off the bat? No, nah, you're just trying to witness to them. This is, just keep it at that. Don't let the buildup, right, and all the thoughts that come in the buildup hinder you from the event. It's okay to fill all that stuff. I would suggest to, to to what I call collapse fear. And once you start feeling feeling the fear, boom, move, take an action, go. Right before you let it build super high to where you're feeling like cowing down. But for me and my in the scenarios that I've been in, majority of the time, there's probably one time where I actually cowed down, but like, hmm. 80% of the time, I guess you would say, 80 to 90% of the time, when when I, I, I was at the peak of the buildup, I still pushed through. And that's not an easy thing to do. So that's why I don't recommend it. Once you start feeling it, go, take an action, move, uh, do it, boom, rah, just move straight into it, okay? So so going back, recapping, you, you write everything down, you're looking at it, you check it if it's something that you feel confirmed with God. You put a little hyphen next to it if it's something that you're kind of like, I don't know about, and then you don't put anything... If God didn't, if you didn't feel God said anything, most of the time you guys are gonna either gonna have checks or blanks. Okay, next on the right side of your little se- sentence of what you told God or what you felt God told you to do. Okay, then you're gonna take that. You're gonna ask for a meeting with your spiritual authority, your parents, your pastor. You go with your parents first, then your pastor next. Because if your parents, because nine times out of ten, when you get in your pastor's office, they're gonna say what your parents say. Okay, just. You know, okay, cool. So you talk with your parents. Dad says, go talk to pastor. Mom says, go talk to pastor. Mom says, yes. Dad says, yes. Mom says, no. Mom, whatever happens, okay? Happens. And then you go to your pastor, okay? Talk to your pastor. You're checking it out. You're making sure everything's clean. Then you move to what's the next step. So pastor, what do I do after this? Or dad, what do you think I should do next? C- consult with your spiritual authority as to what you should do next, okay? If they tell you to pray about it, go pray about it. If you don't have any direction, if they don't have any direction, they just said, okay, this is the voice of God. This is definitely God speaking. Okay, well, you know what to do. You know, just keep doing what you're doing and ask God for uh, the, the, the 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 next step. So then once you find that next step, you take action on that next step, okay? Remember, the build up to that step, I don't know if it's going to be the, the first step, the second step, the seventh step, the hundred and seventh step. The 700th step, whichever step that has a lot of fear into it, because there will be a lot of steps that have a lot of fear involved in it, you're going to want to move before the fear builds. Don't let it build. Listen, the event is always, excuse me, the build up to the event is always going to be worse than the event itself, okay? Just, Just know that, like, that's like a rule of thumb. I have not seen that not be the case, okay? But I can imagine so. It, it could be the case in some scenarios. But nine times out of ten, the scenarios, especially when you're following the will of God, is not going to be, the, the, the buildup is always going to be worse than the event itself. So, then you take that action, okay? Or remember, we talked about your commitment too. You know, you're, com- you're committing to that. No matter what happens, if an asteroid falls and land in my mailbox and all my mail burns up and my information that I needed in order to move forward was in that mail piece, then I will still figure out how I'm going to do it. Okay. You make that commitment. You're taking that step, you're taking the next step, you're taking the next step. You're going to take the next step and you're going to follow through. Okay. I want you guys to follow through on what you told Jesus you did or what you're going to do. Okay. Or what you want him to do or what he told you he wanted you to do. I want you guys to follow through. Okay. Don't let it be just some conference hype. 
Okay? Honestly, don't let it be conference hype where you just said all those things, made all those commitments to God. You told him you're going to do all types of good, glorious things that sounded good when your friends were saying it around you while you were praying. Okay? Don't tell him you're... Or you said it because the, pre the preacher wanted you to say it or you felt like you should say it because of the message. No, no. Be real with Jesus. Okay? You make commitments. We all have done it. And we all have failed commitments. We all have fallen through on commitments. Okay? Don't let this happen this time. Okay? Actually get involved and say, you know what, God, I am going to take what Yapa 238 is giving me. I'm going to try this stuff out because it's honestly the stuff that helped me. Okay. It's the stuff that helped me get to, you know, I'm doing things that, you know, are pretty, you know, pretty good stuff, I would say, um, <laughs> in, uh, uh, in the things that I, it, in my short period of period of life. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, yeah, that's what I got for you guys today. I want you guys to really think about it. You guys made commitments, follow through. Follow through, follow through, okay? And Yappa 238, your boy is going to be here doing the same exact thing. So listen, in six months, in four months, in three months, however long it takes for some of these things, I'm scared to do to actually get underway. If, if I'm going to get to that point, okay? I want to meet you guys there on the side of actually following through and actually succeeding. I want to meet you guys on that side and be like, yo, we, we rock together. We did great things together, right? Because we both applied the same thing that's coming, that's I'm you know t telling you guys to do right now. Whether it's you won 10 souls or you won 100 souls or you taught 100 Bible studies or maybe you started, you know, a YouTube channel to, to minister to your friends and to minister, whatever it was, whatever it was, whatever it was that you told God you're going to do or that he told you to do. We want to be on the other side in the next, like I said, three, four, six months where we're on that side and we're like, dude, we did it because we followed through. Our spiritual authority was in the loop. We stayed in con constant communication with God. We are good by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, it is he that giveth the power not only to get wealth, but just power in general. You'll find that outlined in the entire Bible that God gives us our power. And so I want you guys to be blessed. Okay, you guys had, I promise you that was this chair that was creaking in. Okay, I promise that was a chair. Anyway, so um, <laughs> I want you guys to be blessed. Seriously, I want you guys to be prosperous. I want you guys to move forward in the things of God and what you promised God you would do. So move forward in Jesus' name. Know that I love you guys to be apostolic above all, above all. You better be apostolic. And I'll catch you guys in the next podcast. God bless you all. Love you guys in Jesus' name.